Hi, my name is Steve Endo, and I'm a Microsoft MVP, and today I'd like to invite you on a journey to learn Dynamics 365 Business Central Development from scratch. This is the introduction to that series. So what do I mean when I say starting from scratch? Well, I've never used Dynamics NAV. I don't know the CAL language, and I've never used Seaside. I'm new to Business Central, I'm new to Docker, I'm new to VS Code, and although I've heard of the AL language, I couldn't write a single line of it if you asked me to. So I'm starting from scratch. I do have some background that may help with this learning process. I have over 15 years of experience working with Microsoft Dynamics GP. I have over 25 years of experience with programming and software development. And I primarily worked with VB, C Sharp, Web Services, SQL Server, and other tools related to Dynamics GP development. However, Business Central and AL development is a completely different world, so I am very much starting from scratch. So, where do we start? Over a year ago, I began collecting Business Central resources. I found every documentation, link, blog post, uh, Twitter user that I could find, and I started documenting them on a blog post here that's bit.ly slash bc resources. And on that page, you'll find over 130 different resources, anywhere from Microsoft documentation, online training, blog posts, Twitter users, YouTube videos, development resources, you name it, nearly everything I could find that was a repository for Business Central information. The one item that we're going to focus on is under the development section, and that is the AL for Beginners workbook. And the AL for Beginners workbook was created by Kristoff, and he goes by Chris, which is just easier to pronounce. And here is his blog post where he talks about the development of this workbook for one of his conference workshop sessions. He started with a small workbook, provide documentation and instructions for users, and before he knew it, he had a 100-page workbook that he graciously released for free on GitHub. Here you see the link for that AL for Beginners workbook. So go ahead, go to that GitHub link and download that PDF. So this is a PDF file that he created that, like I said, has over 100 pages, and it walks you through step-by-step step the process of preparing a development environment, getting Docker set up, VS Code, Git, connecting to an Azure DevOps Git repository, and then developing a Hello World extension, and then subsequently diving into table extensions, code units, and other development concepts for AL. So how do you get started? First, download and optionally print the AL for Beginners workbook PDF. Chris recommends printing it out so you have a hard copy you can annotate, mark up, you can take with you and read, uh, but if you prefer the digital version, you can certainly annotate the PDF. I did print mine. You can just print a couple chapters at a time, double-sided, and use that for notes. You will need a computer or a virtual machine. I personally prefer doing this on a dedicated machine or a dedicated VM so that I don't have to mess up one of my work production computers. I originally tried this on my laptop, which only had 8 gigs of RAM, and it just didn't work. It wasn't enough RAM for me to run Docker successfully. That was a while ago, and memory management may have improved, but I would recommend that you use a dedicated computer with at least 8 gigs of RAM if you're using a physical machine. On a virtual machine, it seems that you can get by with less. Um, I've been able to run fine with 6 gigs or even 4 gigs. Strongly recommend a solid-state drive. There's going to be a lot of disk activity with Docker downloading the Docker images. So the faster your disk, the better off you'll be and the more time you'll save. You will need Windows 10 version 1809 or higher, or you can also use Windows Server 2019 version 1809 or higher. I've tried both. 
I actually prefer using Windows Server 2019 with Docker Enterprise. So that's what I'm going to show in some of my demonstrations as an alternative to Windows 10 and the community edition of Docker. And I'd strongly recommend only using newer hardware, less than three years old. I would not try to pull out a five-year-old PC and get this to work. I gave that a try. I was unsuccessful for unknown reasons, but the newer the hardware, the better chances are for success with Docker and the nav container helper scripts. And you will want patience, persistence, and curiosity. Uh, there will be some bumps along the road where you have to figure some things out for yourself, but hopefully it's a pretty smooth process. So what are the first steps in this journey? First, we're going to set up your development environment, and that involves getting a Windows machine, Windows 10 or Windows Server, installing Docker, nav container helper script, Visual Studio Code and Git, and accessing a Business Central Online Sandbox. And I've highlighted Docker and Nav Container Helper in red because those were the two items that I had the most trouble with. They weren't major problems, but they were small problems that took me uh, part-time months to figure out. And now that I believe I figured most of them out, it should be smooth. But don't be surprised if you run into some hiccups getting Docker to work and getting the nav container helper scripts to work the way you want and to learn and understand them. Once you get your development environment set up, things are much easier from there and the rest of the workbook goes pretty smoothly. So thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope you're excited. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at Steve Endo, or you can check out my blog at blog.steveendo.com.